Hallelujah. 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 Praise your name, O God. Hallelujah, church. Once again, can we give a massive, massive, massive clap offering to the Lord? Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. You are worthy of it all, O Father God. You are worthy of it all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Can we just greet our neighbor? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, those people that you do not know, you smile to them. You smile to them and you say, Good morning. Good morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are most worthy to be praised, O Lord God. Hallelujah. Tell that to your neighbor. He is most worthy to be praised. He is most worthy. Yes, Lord. Yes, O Father God, let us pray. Hallelujah, Lord. Truly indeed, Father, that you are most worthy to be praised. And Father God, we are very thankful for allowing us, for moving in our midst. We are very thankful, Lord, for experiencing you this morning. We are very thankful for the life of the music team, O Lord, that you have used this morning to usher us in your presence this morning. Thank you so much, Father God. Lord, thank you so much as well for the life of each and every one. I know it is not easy to wake up in a Sunday morning, but thank you so much for that desire, for that passion, for that longingness that you have set in their heart to be able to come and gather with other believers, O oh Lord God, just to worship you, just to glorify your name, just to proclaim how worthy you are. Hallelujah, Lord. Father, once again, with humbleness and humility, we bow down and say that Father, forgive us for all the things that we have done. Forgive us for all the things that we have left undone, O God. Our act of commission and our act of omission, whatever it is that does not please us, you, Father, forgive us. Forgive us and deliver us, O Lord God. And Lord, by faith, we know and we do believe that you have forgiven us and you have cleansed us once again this morning. Thank you so much, O Lord, for that love that flows out from the heart of your Son, Jesus. That love, O God, that authored, that grace and mercy that abounds and overflows. That grace and mercy, O God, that all of us become recipient of. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Father, thank you as well for the opportunity to listen and to receive from you through your words, through your scriptures, Father God. Lord, your servant, I humble down myself unto you and I just ask for the blood covering. Father God, I pray that you hide me within your shadow. Hide me, O Lord God, with the hem of your garment. Cover me with the hem of your garment. So that these people, my brothers and sisters, won't be mere looking at this flesh talking in the front. Won't be mere just looking at this corruptible being talking in the front. Father God, consecrate my mouth, consecrate my tongue. Whatever it is that will flow out from this pulpit, I believe is touched by you. And I believe, O oh Lord God, is useful to all the recipient in whom, Lord, your servant has first been received and rebuked and encouraged, O God, and trained. Thank you so much. Father, we take authority over all the works of the enemy and we rebuke any hindrances, any disturbance or distractions that will deter us this morning. Father God, to all who are tuning in online, Father God, we claim and we proclaim and we declare the same through their life. They may be at work, 
They may be at home. They may be in the hospitals. They may be traveling wherever they are. Father, let the grace and mercy and love that flows out from your throne through this pulpit, O God, reach each and every one wherever they are right now. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Indeed, once again, thank you very much uh, to all the music team for that wonderful fellowship and wonderful worship. I just want to take this opportunity to welcome uh, Sunita. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, uh, we've been praying for you. Um, yeah, Mary Ann said that, oh, you make sure you look after Sunita so that uh, he will come back next time when I am around. It's unfortunate. The one who invited is not here. The invite is here, but glory to the Lord. We pray that you will enjoy this moment with the company of the Lord and with the company of our brothers and sisters here. So, welcome to Christ is Our Rock Church Fellowship. So, this is a non-denominational full gospel church. Okay? So, we welcome you and we declare that you will enjoy this moment and we declare by faith that you will be sitting right where you are next week again. Amen. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Wow. That was a wonderful worship, my dear brothers and sisters. And thank you so much. So to another praise, let's jump to another message on praise. And the message of our title, uh, the title of our message today is Come and see what the Lord has done for me. Amen. Come and see what the Lord has done for me. Are we in a position this morning? I remember Kenneth, where is Kenneth? He was exhorting that he said that, I do not know whatever it is that you have gone through this week, but I know and I do believe that the Lord will do something in your situations. Amen. And I know and I do believe that earlier, when Kenneth was exhorting us, that was just a declaration. I believe that at this moment, that those declarations were answered. Amen. So come and see what the Lord has done for me. Church, are we in the position this morning to declare, to claim, and proclaim that? Amen. Come and see what the Lord has done for me. Has the Lord something, done something in your life this morning? I thank the Lord for allowing me to worship Him. I thank the Lord for allowing me to spend that moment with Him during praise and worship. And those simple things are actually big things in the eyes of God. Amen. So let's have a look. Are we in a position to declare, to shout and say, Come and see what the Lord has done for me. I'll put Kuya Gab in the spotlight. Kuya Gab, when that comes, come and see what the Lord has done for me. What comes to your mind? Today is your or tomorrow is your? Birthday. Very good. Come and see what the Lord has done for me. The Lord gave me life 11 years ago. You're turning 11, right? Yeah? You look like 10. Amen? So the Lord gave Gabriel life 11 years ago, the Lord gave this Laos couple a gift 11 years ago. And that is enough reason to say, come and see what the Lord has done for me. Especially seeing how they are being used and utilized by the Lord. Okay? So let's have a look, my dear brothers and sisters. In First Chronicles chapter 13, verse 13 to 14, this is the time that, this is just ad lib, my dear brothers and sisters. This is the time that David does not want to take the Ark of the Covenant to the city that he built, which is called the city of? The city that David called, that David built, which is called the city of? David. Amen. David built it, so it's called the city of? David. It, there's no tricky question, my dear brothers and sisters. No, this is the time that the Ark of the Covenant, David is not willing to take it inside the city that he built. So what did he do? 
He put it in the house of David Edom, the Gittite, or David Edom comes from the tribe of Levi. So he comes from the tribe of the priests. Amen? So when he put that Ark of the Covenant in the house of David Edom, what did the Lord do? What did the Lord do? Amen. The Lord bless Obed Edom. The Lord bless the household of David Edom. So my dear brothers and sisters, what can you notice in there? There is a thing called Ark of the Covenant. That this Ark of the Covenant, whatever it is, that King David is very dreadful on bringing that Ark in that city that he built. So that's the reason why that he put it aside in the house of David Edom. But that Ark of the Covenant, whatever it is, that King David was mostly dreading, that same Ark of the Covenant bless the house of David Edom. Are we following church? Amen. Amen. Sorry? Obed Edom. What did I say? Sorry. Obed Edom. Okay? So, let's see what is that Ark of the Covenant. Amen. Does that look familiar? Have you seen a picture of a photo of that one before? No? So that is the Ark of the Covenant. And if you have your Bible with you, if you have your phone applications with you, let's quickly open and see what is that Ark of the Covenant. If you open your Bibles and if you open your applications in Exodus chapter 25. Is there a water, please? Can you hand the water in here? Thank you very much. Exodus chapter 25. Who can, uh, no, who can uh, read loudly? Thank you very much. Bigay mo kay brother, listen, pasahin na rin yan. Exodus 25, 10 to 22. Thank you very much. Pay attention, my dear brothers and sisters. Have and the people understand. make an ark of acacia wood, a sacred chest, inches long, inches wide, 27 inches wide, sorry, and 27 inches high. Overlay it inside and outside with pure gold and run a molding of gold all around it. Verse 12. Cast four gold rings and attach them to its four feet. Two rings on each side. Make poles from acacia wood and overlay them with gold. Insert the poles into the rings at the sides of the ark to carry it. These carrying poles must stay inside the rings. Never remove them. When the ark is finished, place inside it to the stone tablets inscribed with terms of the covenant, which I will give to you. Then make the ark's cover the place of atonement from pure gold. It must be 45 inches long and 27 inches wide. Then make two cherubim from hammered gold and place them onto the two ends of the atonement cover. Mold the cherubim on each end of the atonement cover, making it all of one piece of gold. The cherubim will face each other and look down on the atonement cover with their wings spread above it, they will protect it. Place inside the ark the stone tablets inscribed with the terms of the covenant, which I will give to you. Then put the atonement cover on top of the ark. I will meet you, I, I will meet with you there and talk to you from above the atonement cover between the gold cherubim that hover over the ark of this covenant. From there, I will give you my commands for the people of Israel. Amen. Thank you very much, brother. Thank you very much. So my dear brothers and sisters, no? That Ark of the Covenant is very important. Amen. That Ark of the Covenant is very important. You know, the Lord entered a covenant with Moses. The Lord entered into a covenant with the children of Israel through Moses. 
And that covenant, my dear brothers and sisters, is a conditional covenant. What is covenant? A promise. Agreement. Amen. So the Lord made a covenant with the people of Israel through Moses. In this covenant, my dear brothers and sisters, is a conditional covenant. A conditional covenant meaning the Lord says, You are going to be my people. I am going to be your God. I will favor you. I will bless you. I will bless your children's and your descendants to come from generation to generation, but you should walk with me. But you should look up on me as your God. Amen. So it is a conditional covenant. It was a conditional promise. And the Lord instructed Moses that make yourself an ark. And that ark, my dear brothers and sisters, no, that is the reason why it's called Ark of the Covenant, because it serves, my dear brothers and sisters, as testament to that covenant. Amen. You know, music team, we were talking about the tabernacle that Moses built. Amen. And in that tabernacle, the innermost part or the innermost room, which is called the Holy of holiest. You know what is inside that holy of holiest? There's only one thing. What is inside that holy of holiest? The Ark of the Covenant. And basing on the scripture that Brother Lester read, it says in there that the Ark of the Covenant, my dear brothers and sisters, contains the Ten Commandments that the Lord gave to the children of Israel. That Ark of the Covenant, my dear brothers and sisters, basing on the word that we have read, that is where the Lord will come down, that will reflect the presence of the Lord. Amen. Remember before, the Israelites cannot just face this way and call to the Lord. Unlike now, you are sitting there, and while I'm talking here, in your mind, you can call to the Lord. But during this ta that time, the people of Israel cannot just simply come to the Lord. They have to go through the priest. And the priest will have to go through the Holy of Holies to represent the nation. So my dear brothers and sisters, what makes that room the Holy of Holies because of the presence of that Ark of the Covenant in there? And like what we've said, that Ark of the Covenant, in here, that is where the presence, the glory of the Lord comes. Amen. That is where the holiness of the Lord comes. In here, my dear brothers and sisters, that is where that can make or break the priest. You know, when the priest goes in there and they are not holy enough and they are exposed to the presence of the Lord, they fall down, die there and then. Amen. So that's how important that Ark of the Covenant is because A, that is a testament to that covenant. That is the evidence of that conditional covenant that the Lord gave to Moses for the people of Israel. That is where the presence of the Lord descends. If the Lord wants to tell something to the people of Israel, if the Lord comes and wants, the Lord wants to make His presence known, that is where that presence of the Lord comes, my dear brothers and sisters. And we have heard that Mo, uh, the Lord gave a specific instruction on how to build that Ark of the Covenant. Why is it, my dear brothers and sisters, that there are, there are gold, ring of gold in there? So if they are carrying it, they are just gonna insert that pole. No one is allowed to touch that because why? That's the presence of God. They said, no one have seen the Lord and went on to live. That's the Old Testament way. No one have touched the Lord and went on to live because of the holiness of the Lord and the sinfulness of man. 
there is an imbalance, my dear brothers and sisters. That's the reason why that you see pictures of the priest carrying the Ark of the Covenant in their shoulder. Only the priest can carry the Ark of the Covenant. And before they carry that, they need to consecrate themselves. Amen. So my dear brothers and sisters, that's, that is the Ark of the Covenant. Amen. Exodus chapter 25 verse 22, the passage that we read, the Lord said that this is, it is where I will meet you from above the mercy seat, from between the two cherubims that are on the ark of the testimony. I will speak with you about all that I give you in the commandment for the people of Israel. Leviticus 16.22, tell Aaron, your brother, not to come anytime into the holy place inside the veil before the mercy seat that is in the ark, so that he may not die, for I will appear in the cloud over the mercy seat. Those were just a recap of what we have said, my dear brothers and sisters. So my dear brothers and sisters, with that promise, amen, that the Lord said, I will be your God and you are going to be my people. I will bless you and your descendants to come if you remain in me. So my dear brothers and sisters, with that Ark of the Covenant, what did it give to the people of Israel? It allowed the people of Israel to win against their battles. We can see, my dear brothers and sisters, that as Israel is moving from that Egypt, going to the promised land, that they are defeating every country, every kingdom, and every nation in the way because of the presence of the Lord that was in them. The Ark of the Covenant allowed the people of Israel in crossing that Jordan River. Remember, they have to cross that Jordan River. How did they manage to cross that? The priest carrying the Ark of the Covenant as they step on the water, the water separated. Remember, during the conquer of Jericho, the most advanced army and kingdom during that time. And the walls of Jericho, those people who went to Israel with us last time, can attest how thick the wall. When you are talking the wall, probably within that wall and probably until this wall, that thick the wall is, but that crumbled. Because how? The people of Israelites, according to the scripture, Joshua, every morning, they go around that walls carrying the Ark of the Covenant, just praising the Lord, just worshiping the Lord. And on the seventh day, as they move around seven times and they shout, Hallelujah! And those walls crumbled. So my dear brothers and sisters, here we can see how important that Ark of the Covenant within that agreement of the Lord in the people of Israel. Are we following it so far? Are we getting bored? Amen. No? So my dear brothers and sisters, uh, just a side note, no? But what happened? The Lord said, I will bless you and your children's to come if you remain in me. But what happened? Israel rebel against the Lord. Particularly, we remember Eli, the high priest who consecrated Samuel. Yeah? Eli has two sons. Obviously, Eli is from the tribe of Levi. So, his children became high priests as well. So, Eli has two sons, Hufni and uh, what's the other one? Hufni and is it Pinchas? Yeah? Hufni and Pinchas? So what have they done? They did detestable things for the Lord. You know when the people of Israel, they are offering, offering to the Lord, Hufni and Pinchas, binabawasan nila. Those meat, the, the offering meat. The priests are allowed to get some part of the meat no, what they do is the priest is allowed some part of the meat. They boil some part of the meat and they use a big prong. Whatever it is that is uh, uh, taken in the prong, that is the portion of the priest. But what they do, 
they go to the people and say that, no, we don't want boiled meat. We want barbecue. We want grill. So give it to us fresh. So what did they did detestable things in the eyes of the Lord. So what happened, my dear brothers and sisters? What happened, my dear brothers and sisters? Amen? The Ark of the Covenant was captured. The Ark of the Covenant was captured by the enemy. So the Ark of the Covenant fell into the hands of the Philistine. But we can see, my dear brothers and sisters, that during the time that the Ark of the Covenant stayed in the camp of the Philistine, the Lord cursed their camp. 